Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. And with me today is Amira Lutfi, our reviews editor. Hey, Amira, thanks for joining me here today. So great to have you back. Mm -hmm. and yeah, for you. sure. <laughs> So every Friday, a bunch of us here at Metastellar, or in this case, just the two of us today, uh, read the top 10 sci free sci-fi and fantasy books on Amazon. Um, and we don't read the whole book, just the first couple chapters. And we tell you how we like it so that you know whether to get this book or not for your weekend enjoyment. Uh, so today's list has Shifting Magnetic Poles, First Contact with Aliens, Magical Private Eyes, Shapeshifters, a smuggling ship caught in the middle of an interstellar war and a magic school student with no magic. And the link to the article and to all the books is in the description box below. For those who are new to our channel, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free for our readers. We publish original short fiction, reprints, excerpt essays, and lots and lots of book reviews. We're able to do this thanks to our Patreon supporters and also thanks to people who buy our anthology, which is now out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and in lots of other online retailers, uh, and also in at least one physical bookstore. So um, if you're in the Worcester area, you can stop by and uh, pick it up. Uh, I'll have the link in the description box below as well. Okay, so let us get into the books. The first book is um, is Resonance by A.J. Scudier. Okay, the first of four books in a relentless suspense techno thriller series. And let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys so that you can see it. There you go. There's the book. Uh, the other books in the series are $3 each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. However, the fourth book, Phoenix, is free today. The author has been on our list before, um, and um, and uh, he's a, he uh, wrote uh, The Hunted, uh, first of five books in the Black Carbon sci-fi dystopian thriller series. So this is what he writes, kind of thrillers. And here, this book is about the Earth's po magnetic poles shifting. And um, so it starts out with a geologist who's on a dig, and he discovers that the rocks are really wonky um, at this site where the other scientists are paleontologists digging up dinosaur bones, and he's there to look at the rocks. And things are, he finds like weird things. And meanwhile, um, uh, Jordan has started a new job at the CDC, and he's flying out on an assignment because a girl has been bitten by a strange spider. And also, meanwhile, another scientist, a biologist, has found a whole bunch of six-legged frogs where they're not supposed to be six-legged. So it's a slow-paced uh, book, lots of science. The tension is building, like what's going on with all these different weird scientific things happening all over the planet. I love it. I like this kind of book and I might stick with it. Um, I definitely, I was definitely getting into it, but I had to stop and go on to read other books. So my next book on list is the number two on um, today's bestseller list was Lost Contact by Nathan Heistad. The first of three books in the bridge sequence first contact series. The other books are a dollar each and they're both in Kindle Unlimited. This has a very similar feel to the previous book. It's kind of a techno thriller. It has uh, the main character is an archaeology professor and he also starts out going down into like a dig um but it's a little bit uh more slow paced um and it's slightly creepier because you know there's like aliens coming and there's conspiracies and things like that it has a uh kind of a uh uh indiana jones meets uh first encounter like was it Encounters of the Third Kind? Like something like that it has that kind of um, a feeling to it. So if you like that kind of book, uh, check it out. 
Um, not so much for me. I might I might stick with it, but it is kind of a little slow paced and a little creepy for me. Then we have uh, the Raven, uh, the Night Raven, sorry, by Sarah Painter, the first of eight books in a Crow Investigations urban fantasy series. The other books are five dollars each, and the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. And the eighth book is scheduled to be released in October. So the story here is that Lydia Crow has just moved to London. Uh, she had a job in um, Scotland that didn't go so well and finally took an offer from her uncle that involved an apartment for her to stay in in London. That's a, like in a creepy, above a creepy abandoned cafe. And uh, she's been warned against her uncle. Um, if he finds out that she's got powers, he's going to put her to work and take advantage of her. And what powers does she have? Well, she sees ghosts. Um, because there's a ghost in her apartment when she shows up. Um, and uh, and right after she gets to her new apartment, a guy breaks in with a gun, threatens her, and the ghost steps in and helps her and saves her from this assailant. So um, it's a fun beginning. Um, it's not as lighthearted and, and fun as a urban fantasy, um, magical investigations book would, would I would expect to, to see, but it is very, very readable. And I do like the main character. Um, I'm a little concerned because their other books cost money, but I might finish it, but I might not because some of the other books on this list I like quite a bit more. Um, the next book on the list, Taken by the Dragon King by Amelia Shaw, is the first of six books in the Dragon Kings of Fire and Ice paranormal romance series. The other books are 3 to $4 each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. The last two books aren't out yet. Book five is scheduled to be released at the end of this month, and book six is due out next January. The author has been on this list before a couple of times. Uh, once. Um another paranormal romance series. So uh, Amira read this book. Amira, what did you think? I mean, there's a hot guy on the cover. So that kind of tells <laughs> me everything I need to know. But what did you think about it? Very astute of you to notice the hot guy. Um, if you look at his face, he might not actually look that handsome. I thought he had a really bad face. But uh, he's not wearing a shirt. So that tells us a lot about this book. Anyway, um, it's a shifter romance. And that basically means that um, uh, there's a, a magical animal shifter person who needs to find their mate. Oh, and no. They, they, huh? I said, well, oh, no. <laughs> um, okay. I thought you were gonna like tell me that's not what that means. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so they need to find their mate, and if they don't, they will, you know, they might go crazy, or they might just lose their powers, or something bad might happen if they don't find their mate. And when they do, they are mated forever. Oh no! Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Personal <laughs> pet peeves. <laughs> I mean, okay, so I find it to be really cute. Um, I can, you know, there are people like that out in the world who are just like really want to find their mate. So, um, I, you know, I think it's cute. Um, and uh, I like the faded mates trope because um, it, it has romance built into the magic system. So for me, because the magic system itself is just very you know, relationship based, I feel like that kind of makes sense that the whole thing would be about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Or it would all be that it would be a, like, it doesn't feel forced. A lot of the time romance feels forced to me in, in books, I guess, or even on like TV. Um, so yeah, I probably will not be coming back to read this. Um, he He's a king who shifts into a dragon 
And it's very unbelievable. The way he acts and the way his servants, quote unquote servants, behave with him is just not very believable at all. But it's still very cute. It's cute and it's sweet and it's fast paced. So I can understand why other people like it. I might still come back to it, but I don't know. <laughs> not sure. So what's the premise of the story? Um, let's see. Uh, come on, Maria. You know the premise. There's a there's a guy. He's a king. He's a nice guy. He can't find his mate. He's looking for his mate. He's struggling. But, but what's what's happening with the girl? There's the girl, right? I mean, it, she comes in like chapter five or six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or at least her perspective comes in pretty late. Okay. That's unusual. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so moving on to uh, what's the next book on our list? The Trouble with Black Cats and Demons by Kat Simons. Let's make that a little bit bigger for you guys. Uh, this is the first of six books in the Carrie Redmond urban fantasy series. The other books are four to six dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And now this is the kind of urban fantasy mystery I like. It's lighthearted. And it's fun. And it's just pure escapist fun reading. Uh, so uh, Carrie Edmund is uh, ducking fireball, fireball, fireballs at the, at the start of this book. And the reason is because her job is as, as a protector. She runs around keeping people safe from the magical bad guys. Um, and these fireballs are from an evil wizard. And she's rescuing a, a little black kitty cat from this evil wizard. Uh, and that, so she breaks into this wizard's house. And the wizard's going to be back at midnight to sacrifice the cat. And it's almost midnight now. And she goes into the house and she finds a naked guy chained to the bed. And the naked guy shifts into a black leopard and then shifts back again. So apparently that's the little kitty cat that she's been sent to save, uh, a full-size male shapeshifter. So um, and so, so she has magical skills and she frees him and rescues him. And it turns out that this guy actually went in on the undercover um, to try to figure out what this evil wizard was working on. And, and got into trouble, and so she had to go rescue him. So it's a meet cute, or a meet naked, you know. Uh, <laughs> and it's just a fun, lighthearted thing. And she was like, well, I was expecting a cute little kitty cat. Look who I got, that kind of kind of thing. So it's, it's fun. And yeah, I'm going to stick with it because it's just, it's just a fun read. Uh, I don't know if I will I will stick it out for the whole series because the rest of the books cost money, but I'll I'll probably be finishing this one. Uh, next we have Hidden Deep by Amy Patrick, the first of ten books in the Hidden Saga Paranormal Romance series. The other books are five dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. We previously reviewed the seventh book in the series a year ago. And the author also has another series uh, on Amazon, um, and that that book made our top three sci-fi list um, last March, not this past March, uh, March in 2021. So um, this is the kind of book you would like, I think, if you like Twilight. Uh, Ryan Carroll is 16. She just she and her mom have just moved in with her grandmother in a house that's in the, in the middle of the woods and she likes going out into the woods and 10 years ago um a, a guy saved her life um and now she's 16 and the guy shows up again while she's uh swimming in her underwear in a pond in the woods and uh the guy is supposed to stay out of view his race has been living undetected for thousands of years on earth um but there's just something about her right um 
So I'm not enthused about the premise. Uh, and the guy is annoying. He's annoying. He holds her clothes and, yeah. and forces her to stop and talk to him, even though she wants to get away. And yeah. he chases her. He chases her. And he's like, I've got something for you. And he's got the book that she lost 10 years ago when she almost died. And so he's just rude and annoying. And I know he's hot. And they're going to end up together. And I, I just don't like anything about it. So oh, no. not for me, but <laughs> it uh, obviously it's on this list. So a lot of people do like it. And I do have to say it's readable. Uh, it's just not something that I personally would want to read. Uh, next, we go to the Vestic series by Eric Asher. And this is a box set of the first three books. And the whole series has 19 books in it. And the other books range from a dollar to six dollars each, but they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And when I first saw the cover, I thought this was going to be something like the Dresden Files. And it is. And I was very happy about that because I love the Dresden Files. So uh, Damien runs a magic store and his uh, sister is a vampire and he just hired uh, an assistant because he's really busy with all his magical daring do stuff that he's doing. And it's, it's just a fun premise. There's little girls disappearing in the city. So he's probably going to go and like find them. Um, it's the the people around him are fun. Uh, he's got magical beasts and creatures and people showing up in his shop. It's it's just everything I want in a book, and um, I'm definitely going to stick with this. Um, I'll probably read the whole box set, and maybe I'll even shell out money for the rest of the book, uh, the rest of the books, because I love the Dresden Files, and I have been waiting to find another author like that to read. And this looks like it's it. So highly recommend for people like me. Uh, next, we have The Alchemist's Apprentice. The Alchemist, not, not, not Possessive. Alchemist Apprentice by Dan Michelson. The first of six books in the Alchemist epic fantasy series. The other books are $4 each. And the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. I keep mentioning Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. If you don't know... Kindle Unlimited is where you pay 10 bucks a month and you read all the books you want that are in Kindle Unlimited. But um, a lot of books are, including all the Harry Potter books. Um, I think the last time I checked, the majority of the books on the top 100 list were in Kindle Unlimited. So really good deal if you read a lot of books. So anyway, uh, The Alchemist Apprentice is not my kind of book. It's about young adults and I hate young adults. And it's set in a magic school. And I'm all Harry Pottered out. But I could not put this book down. I was reading it over lunch. And I wound up reading three quarters of the book before I remembered I had like a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So very, very compelling. Caught me right up. So um, Sam is the protagonist. And he and his younger sister are living on the far edge of their kingdom. Uh, in an area called the Badlands, where like nobody ever goes and it's kind of dangerous and it's, their parents are dead, they're orphans, they're very poor, they're like nearly starving. Uh, but his sister does have magical talents, she can make things freeze. So Sam really wants her to get to the capital so she can go to the magic academy. Um, if only like they, she, he can get her tested. But it costs money to, 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 to get the test because they're so far out in the middle of nowhere. But fortunately, one of the other kids in the village, um, his parents think that he may have magical powers and they pay for a teacher to come out from the school and test him. The boy flunks the test. But while the teacher is on his way back, leaving the town, Sam and his sister catch up to him. Um, and demand that he test uh, the girl. He does. She passes the test because she has magic skills. And the boy convinces the teacher to take them both. 
and the teacher decides to take Sam, even though Sam does not have magical abilities, so that Sam can spy on, spy for the teacher because something creepy is going on at the school and the teacher wants to know what it is and people aren't talking about it. So um, as long as Sam is able to convince people that he's there legitimately and stays at the school, um, he gets free room and board, uh, a silver coin a month as a stipend, which for him is a huge amount of money. His sister gets to stay at the school. It's all good. So, so he has to convince everybody that he belongs in the school, and he does it by studying his butt off. Uh, it, like I said, it is a great story. I could not put it down. The first thing I'm going to do when I finish my work for today is go back and finish this book. I really, really liked it, even though it's not my kind of book. Um, then we have A Breach of Peace by Daniel Gibbs and Gary Stevens. The first of seven books in A Breach of Faith space opera series. The other books are a dollar to five dollars each, and the series is in Kindle Unlimited. The seventh book will be released in December and is available for pre-order. So uh, the author's been on this list before um, a couple of times. I love space operas. This is my favorite genre, and I'm just really looking forward to this book. The book reminds me a lot of... Um, the Joss Whedon uh, space opera, Firefly. That's it. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the book Firefly or uh, with a little hint of Han Solo in it. So it's, a, it's about a spaceship, the Shadow Wolf, that's a trading ship. They're smuggling things between planets that they're not supposed to be smuggling. Uh, as the book starts, uh, they're smuggling lithium, which for, for some reason, it's uh, under trading a restriction by uh, the League of Seoul, and they don't have a license to um, export it. So there's a war happening between the League of Seoul and the Terran Coalition, and the League of Seoul seems to be the bad guys. They seem to be a kind of a repressive regime that runs re-education camps. So a little creepy. And... Um, uh, we also meet uh, Miri, a woman um, on a different ship that's just been captured by the League. And to avoid being sent back to a re-education camp, she escapes through a secret passage, puts on a space suit, and jumps off the airlock just before the ship goes through a wormhole. So she's got enough air for two days of floating alone in space, uh, hoping that, that, that she can get rescued. Uh, I love the beginning. Um, and uh, then we get to back to the, sh the Shadow Wolf. They're carrying cargo without a license. They get boarded by inspectors. And, and the captain uh, has, has a plan to, 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 to get out of it. So a very fun read. I am enjoying it very much. It's fast paced. It's suspenseful. And I am planning to stick with it because it's exactly my kind of book. Um, then we have another book that Amira read, Midnight Angel by Kimberly Law. The first of four books in the Thorn Chronicles epic fantasy series. The other books are $5 each, and the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. And the author has also been on this list before. So, Amira, what did you think of this book? Um, I was surprised. It's pretty good. Um, I don't think, I think the, the crap, like, the writing itself is not like that great, right? Like there's something to be desired there, but um, the story is really good. Um, I like the, uh, I might, I might come back to it. Um, it's kind of like a near future dystopia. Mm. And the protagonist is a young girl named Naomi. She, um, she has these parents who, joined a um, an extremist group about like eight years ago and they are going to use her um to do something for for like their i don't know within their extremist ideological view 
right? I don't want to spoil it, but it's pretty good. Um, so I do, I do understand how like a lot of people would like this. I totally understand actually, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and mainly the story, the plot mainly is about the young girl trying to get away from her family. Um, Cause her, you know, her parents are mean. Um, they're, they sound pretty racist. Um, and the, uh, the group they're, they're a part of is called the Crusaders. So, yeah. So I, the speculative fiction part of it is basically that a, um, a supernatural being is going to help her escape, or at least that's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, mm -hmm. so there you go. Um, that was our 10 books for today. If you have any thoughts about these books, uh, let us know in the description box below. Um, pick up uh, the anthology available in both print and electronic form. And I want to shout out to one of our new Patreon supporters, Avery Parks, who's also one of the authors in the anthology. Thank you, Avery. We love you. We love everybody who's uh, supporting us. Uh, all the money raised through the donations goes to pay for new original fiction that we publish on Metastellar and make it free for everybody to read. Uh, so please join us and please subscribe, like, all that, all the usual things. And we're looking forward to seeing you again next Friday because we'll be back. Bye, Mira. Bye.